Madam City Manager, Madam Clerk. Good afternoon, Mayor Benjamin. Afternoon, evening, all evening. the all the above, yeah. Yeah. all the above. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Rickerman. Here. Mr. McDowell. Here. Mr. Duvall. Here. Mr. Vine. Here. Mr. Davis. Here. Mayor Benjamin. Here. I'm going to call on Boy Scout Troop 397, Cub Scout Pack 397, Cub Scout Pack 963, Boy Scout Troop 74, and Cub Scout Pack 74. Is it everyone? You guys come up here and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on up front. I know, right? I pledge allegiance Don't they look great? Come on, come on, guys. Now, would you lead us in the invocation, please? Lord, we've gathered in this chamber today to discern what it is you ask of us to do. Lord, we would simply ask that thou would continue to show favor upon this, our city, Ignite within each of us an opportunity to serve and to hear clearly your call to serve. Ignite us, sensitize us, and allow us to hear your voice speak to us in this chamber. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 All right, uh, is a motion to adopt the agenda? I think we're gonna be removing, which item was that, ladies? Item 47, Mayor Benjamin, removing that item. And if, if you wouldn't mind, Mayor Benjamin, I have two additional changes. Yes, ma'am. Deferral of consideration of item 25, which is a resolution R 2018-43, authorizing consumption of beer and wine only at the South Carolina Carnival in the 1800 block of Main Street between Laurel Street and Richland Street on Saturday, June the 9th, 2018, and adding to the consent agenda resolution number R 2018-039, amending resolution number R 2016-025, authorizing tastings only of locally produced wine and beer only provided by market vendors and operation of Soda City to include the northern half block area of the 1200 block of Main Street, excluding the sidewalk areas and intersection of Lady Street and Main Street only on Saturday, May 26, 2018. So that was adding that to the consent agenda. And what was it with um, item 25, removing that from the consent agenda? What was that? Deferring, Deferring. consideration, okay. yes, Deferring. sir. Okay, so um, with those amendments? So move. Is there a second? Any discussion? Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Aye. Mayor Aye. Benjamin? Aye. At this time, we would ask for any public input related to the agenda items as outlined. Seeing none, Mayor Benjamin. Is there a we motion would... to approve uh, the Thank minutes you. of April 17th, 2018, Move. and May 1st, 2018? Is, this, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Yes, I got questions on 16 and 17. Yes, 
Yes, sir, Mr. Rickman, what are your questions on 16? This is the uh, council has asked to approve the installation of backup power generators at various pump station sites as requested by Columbia Water. I was trying to understand the contract. I was adding up these numbers and $376,000 of this is going to Hammerhead, CAT, and utility, and I'm trying to figure out what Stutz and William is doing for another 100000 since the equipment and everything seems to be coming from everybody below the line. You're on item 16? Yes, sir. It's, uh, the contract's for $478,000, plus. Yeah, the budget, it's under budget, but I'm trying to understand. It just, the numbers didn't seem to add up. I was trying to figure out what Stutz and Williams was doing for the balance, the $102,000. I can give you, I mean, I have to get you specifically what they're doing, but I mean, it, this is a, a project where the majority of it is mineral protege majority of it is being handled by some and, and I'm assuming that between those two that's for the backup engines and and for the generators and the electrical work and so forth so it brings me back to the top of the heap it just right it, and I, I can't say sp specifically what they will do on this particular project but I mean it's a mineral protege project so we try to utilize as many and 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 I, and I and I get that part. It's the, it's I guess it's the overall business that I'm trying to figure out what what their hundred and twos for. I mean, if they're getting paid for oversight, then I think we need to hold this. Um, I mean, it, it, I can find that out for you. Yeah, I, I'd like to hold this okay. until we get some clarification because it just doesn't make sense. And then as and the the the, the question I had came down as we went down to the to the next one as well is is how is this breakdown we got the brown, brown and caldwell so the way i look at this is brown and caldwell getting six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for for uh engineering services on a, a 1.2 million dollar project the the project itself is the engineering services Well, I guess I'm, you know, trying to understand the breakdown is just not clear, and I'm sorry to, to put you in the spot at this hour without giving you a heads up. But the protege here says we'll provide analysis, design, permitting, geotechnical, and public relations. I mean, it sounds like they're doing the bulk of the work. Well, uh, you're talking about 4D, the uh, protege? Yeah, I'm looking at 4D, and then I look at Chow who's providing surveying and easement exhibits, and then I'm looking at environmental permitting consultants who are doing the delineation and the permitting, so <laughs> kind of this, lost. This is, a, this is a major sewer line, um, so the, the plans themselves will be produced by Brown and Caldwell. Yeah, I guess the question is... would be handling the permitting process, and Chow would be handling the survey services. You got environmental permitting because there is wetlands and so forth on this particular project. So. I think in the future it'd be very helpful. And a lot of, I get more and more questions from the public on these items because we have so much of them coming through on the 2020 program that, you know, when you go to the top line and you look at what it's awarded to who, we get a pretty good detail of what it is for the subs, but we don't get any detail of what's going up here and understanding how their contract is is that large and a good portion of it going to them with no explanation. So I think in the future it would be very helpful. Um, it's a, it's a mentor-protege project, so the intent is for the, the mentor, I mean, they're actually the contracts with the mentor, they're pro providing the product, but the intent is for the protege to do as much of it as which possible. Which I totally understand that part. It's the $670,000 that's going to Brown and Caldwell. There's no explanation of what it really is and how that relates. It just seems, you know, if we're doing a major pipe, that seems a lot of money when the rest of the Minotaur, the protégés are doing the work. So if we could get some clarification on these, especially in the okay. future, it would be very helpful for the public. Okay. So are we holding 16 but not 17, is that? Um, 16, yes. I, I want to get an explanation on that one I for sure. I apologize. I don't have it specifically broken down to what they're doing. But 
Yeah, and then while we're here, I'm going to go ask this one too. Is on 19, we had a. It seems like there was a very large change. We went from a budget amount, which we're. I give staff very good credit. We've always been very close on budgeting, but this one's off, and there was no explanation that I could find. So we didn't provide an explanation of what the difference is, but we did. I mean, we we actually went out with this twice, and, and both times. It, First time I think we only had one bidder. Second time we came in, and they were they were all close, but it, it is at 1.7. Okay. It was just undershot to begin with. That would be helpful. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, so you good with everything on the consent agenda? Other than 16. 16. I'll all right. Take 16. It. Okay. We got hold 16. You good with that? Or are you gonna just take it off? Well, we'll hold deferring it until. The this, next meeting, I, okay. it must not be a sense of urgency or the staff would have mentioned 16, that. 16, we, we okay holding it till the next meeting? Or what's the, what's the uh -huh. is there a sense of urgency around or we just want to take it off the consent agenda and take it separately? I think you don't have urgency around it, do you? We can, we can hold it. Yeah. It, is, it is part of the TSOM where we have to get generator back up at, the, at our individual pump stations, but, but I understand the council. Joey, can you make request. sure with the mic? I'm sorry. Joey, if it's a critical item, I'm willing. I'm willing to move forward on it, but I'd like to have the explanation. I can. I can provide you explanation. The, the TSOM, which is our <coughs> transmission system operation and maintenance program, um, we do have as a requirement of that to get back up at the individual pump stations, which is what this provides us as part of the TSOM program. And right, so Councilman, if we can hold it if, if we need to. If it's critical item, I, I don't want to hold it up because I know what that can do in a bad situation, um, but. I would like to, to have way. a breakdown on it. What's your gut? Tell us what's up. If we can move forward, would be that would be the preference, all and right. I can provide the information. Okay. You, if that's um, okay. And share that with all the council, please. All right. Yes, sir. We'll do. All right. Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Ms. <coughs> Ms. Wilson. Yes, sir. Item 26 is the first of our presentations this evening for public service recognition, um, which I have. And we are wanting to share with you all a really special video that was produced in honor of Public Service Week. Um, we have wonderful public servants, including yourselves, here at the City of Columbia. So we have a brief video to share. I serve because I'm a firm believer in to whom much is given, much is expected and required. So I've got a, a love and a passion for what I do. I'm lucky enough to actually be in a, a job and position where I, I enjoy getting up every single day. It gives me a chance to give back to others uh, in their uh, greatest time of need. Because I believe that planning for our future is important. I enjoy people. Um, I enjoy being out in the public. Everybody needs that helping hand at times. Well, I think serving your fellow man is very important, and if we care about one another, we serve one another, and that's what all of us should be about. I think that people would feel somewhat um, lost unless you have people in place um, to show you around and show you what, what is available and make people feel welcome. It's about giving back to the community, and also it's about helping those who can't help themselves at, at times. One of the most important qualities a public servant should have is being a believer. Very open-minded. Trustworthy. Compassionate. We have to be patient, we have to be kind, we have to be humble. Seeing individuals as individuals and being empathetic to what they're going through. A believer that events, organizations, programs can get better and enhance the people's quality of life. Ironically, I think the most rewarding experience and enriching experience I've had was during the flood of 2015. I saw our staff step up with servant hearts and give of themselves like I had never seen before in the private sector. That attitude of we can't fail and um, to pull together and deliver like they did was, was, was very rewarding. Most public servants are not doing this for, you know, any financial reward or gratitude, but I do think that they genuinely love what they do to be in the work that they're in. I want a citizens or somebody's worst day uh, when they thought they have lost it all and they say thank you just for saving someone's life, uh, saving a picture or a photo, or even say, saving an heirloom 
is gratification enough for us. I, I daily get an opportunity to connect with the citizenry that we, we serve and it is greatly rewarding to, to me and how I perceive my job myself. All the relationships and connections I've made throughout the years. Seeing those people when you're not working, when you're off the clock, enhances your quality of life so much and I love every day I do it. As public servants, if we don't engage with community members, we're doing a disservice to our community as a whole because we it's so important to be inclusive and to really understand where everyone is coming from in order to build, build a brighter future. We choose to be here. We choose to work with the City of Columbia to serve our citizens. And it's a choice that we all make and, and we need to embrace that, enjoy that, and um, but, but um, understand that, that we appreciate that very, very much. We're one team, one fight. Uh, everybody's trying to achieve the common goal, which is, which is to make Columbia a greater place. Folks get up every day ready to try to make life um, more pleasant for the community, and everybody works hard. I, you know, I can't say thank you enough to all those people because even though I'm also a public servant, um, I'm also being served for, by all those other people as well. And so my, my, I'm very grateful for everything that all of us do here at the city. It's a great place to work and live. Mayor Benjamin and members of the City Council, we want to thank you all for your public service to our community. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you all so much. And I really want to give a special thanks to our Public and Media Relations Department for facilitating such a great video. That was wonderful. Well done. Good job, Justin. I know he's videotaping. Good he's job. Very well done. Very good. Excellent. Our next item in line with public service recognition is our May 2018 Employee of the Month. Ms. Angela Adams, Customer Care Administrator, will present Ms. Heather Greer, Accounting Technician for the Customer Care Division. Good evening. Heather could not be with us this evening, so I am going to accept on her behalf, um, but I would like to say some Please positive do. words about her. Um, it was my pleasure to nominate Heather Greer for Employee of the Month. I have known and work with Heather for 10 years and find her to be dependable, efficient, and a great communicator of information. Heather has a willingness to take on difficult tasks and situations with a mindset of seeking a positive resolution. She readily avails herself to customers and staff with a warm, cheerful, and positive attitude. She is a positive representative of the City of Columbia. Heather deals with countless difficult customer situations but handles each with enthusiasm and interest in providing great customer service. And I am happy, and she is happy, to have been nominated for Employee of the Month. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Angie, we know if Heather has been under your tutelage at all that she is a wonderful employee and always looking for um, the ability to do even better. So please share this token with her on our, on our behalf. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Item 28, Mayor Benjamin, the National Peace Officers Memorial Day and Police Week Proclamation. If you indulge me, I'd like to read this proclamation. Um, whereas Peace Officers Memorial Day and Police Week is an observance of the United States that pays tribute to the local, state, and federal peace officers who have died in the line of duty, and whereas tens of thousands of law enforcement officers from around the world come together in Washington, D.C. to participate in events that honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, and whereas during Peace Officers Memorial Day and Police Week, we celebrate those who protect and serve us every minute of every day, and we honor the courageous officers who devoted themselves so fully to others that in the process they laid down their lives. And whereas, thanks to law enforcement officers, we have safer streets, stronger communities, and a more secure nation. And whereas the city of Columbia is delighted to honor and recognize all the law enforcement officers who are committed to serving and protecting our city to make it a better place. Now, therefore, I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of city council, to hereby proclaim May 15th, 2018, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in the great city of Columbia, and urge our fellow citizens to recognize and participate in its observance. And uh, Chief, I'm not sure are you, you going to have a word with us. Uh, this is obviously consistent with everything that our staff and Ms. Uh, Wilson's done uh, so far. It's so important to recognize 
the work that all of our public employees do every single day to make sure that we live in, in the communities that we live in, and certainly uh, the work that our law enforcement officers do when, when there's a violence or, or danger or gunfire, we're all running the other direction. You guys are running towards it, and we're thankful for your service, and certainly thankful for those men and women who, who lost their lives in, 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 uh, in the process. Chief? Mayor, Ms. Ms. Wilson, Council, uh, thank you for recognizing this week, uh, certainly today, uh, being Police Officer Memorial Day is a day for us to pause and, and remember those that have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice and service of, and protection of their, their communities that they serve. Um, for As a week that we celebrate uh, law enforcement, um, we have a lot to celebrate here. And um, I had the honor of uh, hitting my four year anniversary recently. Um, it's been four incredibly rewarding years for me. Um, leading a great police department. We have a lot to celebrate over this past year. Um, obtaining national accreditation was certainly a, 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 a moment that um, is very important to us, but completing our advancing 21st century policing project. Um, but I think for our, what our citizens need to hear um, and be most proud of is answering 170,000 calls for service, making 6,500 arrests, um, and having complaints um, at less than 100 um, uses wow. of force um, in the 40s. Um, it shows remarkable communication, professionalism, restraint, constitutional policing, professional policing, and um, it's what we expect from our police department, and it's an honor to serve with every single person that puts a, a badge on and wears a gun to protect the city. And we thank you all for recognizing us. Uh, thank you, Chief. Let me give you this. Chief, thank you. Thank you. seats up here um, so um, don't want you to have to feel like you have to stand in the back so I was gonna say ladies but I figured that might not be uh, the appropriate thing uh, gentlemen too there's some seats up here so uh, uh, feel free to come on up front so Mayor Benjamin we have much to celebrate this week as um, certain all public servants but police and of course our public work staff who also serve in the trenches, so to speak, every day, literally sometimes. Um, and we just love these opportunities where we get to just say thank you. So for National Public Works Week, we, will, we would ask you to present a proclamation, and I guess Robert normally does some kind of fun video, or... You never know what we're gonna do. I don't ever know. So. We, we, we <laughs> talked about it in depth, and I'm glad we didn't do a video. We had a great video of public service, and it's uh, very fitting that Public Works Week is next week. I first of all want to recognize some of our past public works people here, and there's a reason I want to do this, but Missy Gentry is a past president of our Public Works Association, 90, 2000 and something, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> whatever it may be. Mary, Mary Pat is a past president of our state chapter. Samantha is currently our secretary. Sarah is the treasurer for the branch. Dana Higgins, which she stepped out, I really wish she was here, she's gonna be the 2019 president. And that has a lot to deal with us, is for the first time ever, we're gonna bring our state chapter to Columbia yeah. and have our conference yeah. here at the convention center. Yeah. So if this uh, goes off well, the poem I'm about to read, and I'm not a poet, so the poem I'm about to read, if it goes off well, Samantha and I wrote this poem. If this poem is average, Samantha wrote this poem. I have to tell you, right? <laughs> so, public works. They are the men and women of public works that get in your way as they do the task to keep our city looking this way. It may be animal control on the intake. We're going no kill for their sake. Forestry provides beautification while traffic delivers the signalization. You might see street division building the sidewalks you seek 
or maybe solid waste visiting each resident three times a week. <laughs> While fleet services and support services have great esteem, we have completed the department's perfect dream. And sustainability, who earned a three star, as you will see, all of our divisions are best by far. <laughs> the power of public works goes beyond these walls, engineering, Columbia Water, and even the city's on calls. As our crews work all around town and the clock, come say hi if they're working on your block. We get weary and we work through the day and night, but your safe travels is what we have in sight. We have our families that sometimes we do not see, but they know we love to make Columbia the best city it can be. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That was, that was really, really cool and sweet. I'm glad you have a day job, however. <laughs> and and, and uh, no, um, and we've been reminded uh, both um, in good times and, and, and bad how important the work you guys uh, do um, all across the city. I mean, we, uh, I think we all probably bug Robert or his team, uh, I get at least every other day, right? Probably every other day. And, and you guys are always incredibly responsive. And we're, 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 we're thankful to you. Um, so um, whereas the public work services provided in our community are integral uh, part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs such as stormwater management, sidewalks, streets, highways, solid waste collection, animal control, traffic engineering and operations, forestry and beautification, support services, and fleet services, whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depend on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, construction, and implementation are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated public works personnel is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. That therefore I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of City Council, do hereby proclaim the, the week of May 20th, 26th, uh, 2018, as Public Works Week in the great city of Columbia, and urge our fellow citizens to recognize in its observance. Teresa, next year I need this to rhyme, okay? So let's make that happen. <laughs> Thank you. I also. I also want to mention we have an annual touch a truck event this Saturday from 9 to 12. It's a great event. Um, I'm sure staff will be out there serving snow cones and popcorn and lemonade. Mayor Benjamin, item 30, recognition of Dr. Bobby Donaldson as the recipient of the 2017 Stephen G. Morrison Visionary Award. Good evening, everybody. Evening. Uh, I, I'm just glad that I, I finally worked into Robert's brain, and he's including art and all kinds of things. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm here on behalf of the Board of One Columbia. Uh, to recognize uh, Dr. Donaldson as the recipient of the 2017 uh, Morrison Visionary Award. Uh, this is an award, this is an annual recognition of a Columbian who reflects many of the values and qualities of those generously given by one Columbia's former leader in support of the growth and vitality of the city of Columbia. Uh, Morrison passed away in 2013 and he co-chaired uh, one Columbia's Art and History Board of Directors for three years. Uh, Dr. Donaldson, who uh, is this year's or 2017 recipient, uh, began his career at the University of South Carolina in 1999 and now leads the Center for Civil Rights, History, and Research uh, housed at the Holling Special Collection Library. And he also serves as the leader, lead scholar for Columbia SC63, Our Story Matters, a documentary history initiative that chronicles the struggle for civil rights and social justice in Columbia. 
And additionally, he has served as a consultant for museum exhibitions, archival collections, oral history initiatives, documentary films, and historic preservation projects, including the renovation of the Booker T. Washington High School in downtown Columbia. And in 2008, the Historic Columbia Foundation awarded Dr. Donaldson and his students the Helen Cohn Henning Prize for their documentary project on the Ward 1 community in downtown Columbia. Um, we annually give this award uh, to honor the vast combination of vision and leadership applied to arts and history and the entire cultural foundation of the city and the value they bring to Columbia and Dr. Donaldson definitely embodies all of that. So uh, there's a short video right. I think they're going to play real quick. We lost Steve in 2013 very unexpectedly and at the time he was co-chair of the board of One Columbia and had served on the board since its inception. I want you to know. The board wanted to do something in his honor. They wanted to honor his vision, uh, his passion. That's one thing I never mean to do. A man, a man who has made yesterday relevant today as he strives to make tomorrow better. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a true visionary. Dr. Bobby Johnson. Likewise, the civil rights movement. And very often when we think of civil rights, we think of places like Mississippi and Alabama, but not Columbia. And part of our goal has been to amplify and to visualize uh, stories of struggle and determination and to, to identify and to document the champions for, for social justice in our city. Bobby Donaldson. That was a great call. Great call. Well, since I have an engagement with my wife on our anniversary tonight, I will be very brief. <laughs> <laughs> Lee and one Columbia, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for this recognition. Uh, many years ago when I arrived in the city of Columbia, I had no idea that this would be one of my assignments. Uh, I want to thank the mayor uh, for this opportunity for supporting the great work we've done. Uh, the great scholar from South Carolina, Mary McLeod Bethune, once said that the search for history and the search for truth is not for timid souls. And through the course of my career in this city, I've had the great opportunity to work with a number of brave, extraordinary, talented people who've helped us tell an important and remarkable story about the city of Columbia. Uh, what we've done in the last five years with Columbia 63 is in many ways just the beginning, and I'm excited about what's on the horizon and excited about the great work that we're doing in collaboration with so many individuals and organizations. And again, I thank you for your support. I thank you for this recognition, and I accept it on behalf of legions of individuals who've worked to tell why our story matters. Thank you. Thank you. And I won't expect Dr. Donaldson to stay. He, he needs to go make sure he, um, your key still works uh, tonight to <laughs> take your wife to dinner. But uh, uh, Dr. Donaldson, um, Bobby's a dear friend, um, is a true Renaissance man. And the work that he's done, uh, not just to tell uh, our story, but I think to completely elevate uh, this city in the eyes of so many people who um, uh, who didn't know the narratives, the, the, the lives led, the value uh, that Columbia, South Carolina has played to the, into this national and, and, and uh, global narrative has just been amazing. Um, he's a 40-something-year-old a, he's a year old man, but I'm convinced the trapped in there is a 100-year-old man who has this incredible grasp of all the different building blocks that have made this city a very special place to, to live for so many of us. So, Bobby, we're just thankful for you, man. Thankful for you. And um, we all thought a great deal of Steve Morrison, and I can't think of another person much more um, uh, deserving uh, than to receive this award. And I'm sure it'll be one of many, many more to come. God bless you, brother. All right, we got a lot more work to do. You know that, right? All right, all right. Thank you. All right.
Item 31, the recognition of the 2018 Miss Columbia, the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin, honoring Miss Alexandra Badgett. Who I also understand is Iota Kai as well. <laughs> <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> to the council to mayor benjamin first i'd like to thank you all so much for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you all tonight i really just wanted to come and introduce myself and let you all know that i am here and i am the reigning miss columbia um, to give you a little bit of information about myself i just graduated this past thursday and friday yes thank you <laughs> I graduated from the Honors College at the University of South Carolina, double majoring in insurance and risk management and finance with my minor in actuarial mathematics. I'm from there right now. It's everything post-graduation is kind of up in the air until Miss South Carolina, but I did want to come to let you all know about my role as Miss Columbia and the preparation for Miss South Carolina, which will be in June. As Miss Columbia, I received this title in January. It's a part of the Miss America program, allowing us scholarship opportunities and opportunities to be able to go out into the community and serve. Through my service, I implement two very important platforms, one of them being Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, and that's the large Miss America platform. The second one being NINE, N-I-N-E, No Is Not Enough, which is my personal platform, looking into sexual assault on college campuses and across the state of South Carolina. So my honors thesis this past semester did an in-depth research of the Title IX policies at the University of South Carolina, and I plan to take some of those initiatives and extend them throughout the state throughout my reign. Um, again, I really just wanted to come introduce myself to each of you, let you all know I am here, and say that I am so eager to serve this community. I've been able to call Columbia home for four years, and I am excited to see what's in store, and hopefully I'll be able to call Columbia home for years from now. Um, but if anyone in here sees any opportunities for me to come, speak, any appearances, I just love to be involved, so I wanted to come and let you all know that I am here. I have some cards with information on them, um, so if y'all want those before I go so you can get in contact with me, I have those as well. So thank y'all. Well, Ms. Badger, congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, and I want to know, and I, 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 I don't want to lost on anyone, the, the Honors College, the South Carolina College at the University of South Carolina is the number one Honors College at any public university in the entire country. And you, uh, and you graduated what? What was your major again? <laughs> Insurance and risk management and finance. Okay, all right. Yes, okay. minor's and actuarial mathematics, so I love that, my that, That's the last part I wanted to hear. <laughs> um, and, and obviously, I think our city manager is also a graduate of the South Carolina College, so um, lots of brilliance abounds in here. We wish you the best as you carry our name so into much. the pageant, and I um, uh, hope and pray you you do really well. Thank you so much. All right. Thank y'all again all right. for all of your time. Thank you. Yes, I do. Alexandra, do you want to pitch with City Council? Do you do you need one? All right, let's do it. Let's do it real quick, y'all. Yeah. You're Miss Columbia. Let me do it. Let me do it. All right, Mr. Thomas. Black Expo Economic Empowerment Summit, Mr. Darren Thomas, president of Thomas Media Group. Hey, Darren. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council. Good afternoon. It's a big week for us, and on behalf of Thomas Media Group, entire staff and management of Black Expo, we want to thank the city for its continued support as uh, we kick off the 21st annual Columbia Black Expo. Our scheduled events include uh, tomorrow night, our Power of Praise partnership with Word of God Ministries and Bishop Eric Davis um, on Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday morning, our kickoff breakfast at Brooklyn Conference Center, and uh, of course, 
Excited to have Councilman McDowell there to introduce our speaker. Um, Friday morning, the uh, 14th annual Black Expo Charity Golf Tournament as we continue to raise funds for the Judge Matthew Perry Scholarship Fund, as well as the uh, uh, Clyburn Golf Center. Uh, Friday night, the eighth annual Taste of Black Columbia, South Carolina State Museum, which is a huge event, over 30 chefs. Uh, very excited about that event. And of course, the big day on Saturday, the 21st annual Columbia Black Expo. I, my purpose here tonight is just to share with you the exciting lineup we have, but more importantly, to help council understand the shift with Black Expo. After 20 plus years, the, uh, or 20 years, the Black Expo, our, our team, our, our board, we sat down and started looking at our model and decided to make a shift in our focus. The Black Expo has now become the Black Expo Empowerment Summit. Our theme, building a legacy for your family, focusing on the five pillars of economic empowerment. Those pillars being jobs, we'll have a very extensive job fair that's a part of this year's Black Expo, education, a very extensive education fair with colleges. We're actually conducting FAFSA assistance on site for families. We had great success with that in Charleston back in March. Our, our wealth generation in partnership with the, heirs, uh, the Center for Heirs uh, Property Preservation as well as Merrill Lynch, helping families understand what it means to really create generational wealth. Health, we have extensive health partnership as a part of the expo because we believe your health is your wealth and of course entrepreneurship thanks to the OBO office, SBA, um, Professor Warren uh, Sutton from the uh, Kentucky State University who will be here to teach his young entrepreneurs program entitled Learn to Fish and of course Miss Angela Rye from CNN is our headline speaker, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, author of Think and Grow Rich uh, also the author of The Wealth Choice, Success Secret of African American Millionaires. We've got a very, very viable and, uh, and, and, and integral part of the expo that uh, will continue to make it, uh, an impression in this community. We believe Black Expo will continue to be relevant as long as it continues to meet the needs of all of its stakeholders, our consumers, our small businesses, our partners, and of course, our municipal partners. We believe the timeliness of this event could not have been better, particularly as you look at City Council's vision, uh, vision statement and the seven focus areas. Number one, goal number one, growth opportunities for entrepreneurship. Fits very well with what Black Expo's mission is. Goal number two, connecting the city's neighborhoods. Clearly, clearly, home ownership, protecting homes, property, very much a part of this year's focus. And of course, goal number three, the quality of life. We believe health as well as wealth fit neatly with uh, the goals uh, and the vision statement of city council. So we believe that the timeliness of Black Expo's focus and shift makes sense with uh, and being synonymous with what city council has, has outlined for the vision of our, of our city. Now, from a hospitality standpoint, we have our, our blueprint for attracting our out-of-town guests our taste event on Friday night, huge event, uh, partnership with the South Carolina Department of Agriculture as we continue to promote certified grown South Carolina. Excited about that. A golf tournament, very pleased to have Coach Will uh, Muschamp as a part of that tournament. All of those, those attributes continue to feed into the success of the expo. Quite frankly, after 20 years, we looked at our model, determined that it was time to uh, continue to meet the needs of the community in a much more aggressive and, and uh, multi-beneficial way. And we say that uh, to the council, thank you. Thank you for the citizens of Columbia for your continued support. We hope to see you all as a part of this event. I look forward to bringing you our, our after action report uh, in July to sh share the findings of this year's event, uh, some of our data collected. And, um, and I also would be remiss if I did not mention the University of South Carolina. This is the first year We've had an extensive partnership, partnership with the University of South Carolina. First time they've ever participated in the expo at this level, bringing the university to Black Expo uh, to make certain that awesome. those uh, from throughout the state of South Carolina and beyond understand the impact the university has on our community uh, here in the Midlands. 
Again, thank you so much. Uh, look forward to seeing you all a part of this, uh, this week's event. Thank you, Darren. Congrats on 21 years. Thank That's you. fantastic. Fantastic. Are we, are we able to start the public hearing in advance of 7 p.m.? We are not, right? No, sir. All right, start at 7. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Would you like to move to the So residence? everyone who's waiting for the public hearing, we can't start until 7 p.m. That's when it's been publicly noticed. So we got about 10 minutes. Can we please do some other parts sure. of the agenda real quick? Certainly. Um, your next items would start with resolutions, Mayor. I'm not sure if you want to take those up at this time or start in a different area of the agenda. The, um, so 43 goes in tandem with 46? Yes, Is sir. Is that right? Yes, and sir. And I think I've, I've talked to council about this one. I'm going to move approval of this, but obviously with the resolution, but, the, but um, and ask for first reading on the ordinance. Uh, with understanding there's a whole lot of discussion that has to happen between now and, and we take 46 back up. So I move approval of, uh, of 43. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Uh, item 44. Resolution number R2018042, authorizing the city manager to execute a Fourth Amendment to lease agreement between the City of Columbia and Hamilton Capital Center, LLC. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? By Gub Scouts and Scouts. It's my first time seeing the, seeing the uh, girls and boys in the, in the Boy Scouts, so it's pretty awesome. All right, um, any discussion? We'll move the previous question. First, Clerk, call a roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Aye. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 45, resolution number R2018-046, authorizing the city manager to execute a 911 communication center agreement extension between the city of Columbia and Richland County. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rickenman. Yeah, can, is this a one-year extension or a two-year? One. It's a one-year extension. Yes, sir. Yeah, and we've been in, involved in some serious discussions, and hopefully we'll we'll have some resolution on well in advance of that way forward. Yes. Sir. All right. Move the previous question. Kurt Colorado. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Ordinance is first reading item 46, ordinance number 2018-022, consenting to the inclusion of property in a multi-county industrial business. Again, uh, motion um, approval uh, with the understanding we're going to have the, the county is on a similar track, but there's some major issues the council wants to resolve before second reading, but I move approval of first reading. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Move the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Ordinance is second reading, item 48, ordinance number 2018-011, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the do City we, of Columbia. Do we want to hold, hold on that one? We're gonna, um, because we're gonna, I know we're going to have a number of uh, amendments, make, so I'm not we, sure. We don't have, but it won't take long. Go for it. All right. Oh. Uh, Please, Madam City Manager, continue. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, chapter 14, Offenses and Miscellaneous Provisions, Article 4, Offenses Against the Public Peace and Order, Section 14106, Hours of Sale Restricted for Commercial Establishments, which allow for on-premises consumption of beer, ale, porter, and wine. Is there a motion? Wine. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Mr. Duval. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I have proposed uh, three amendments uh, to the ordinance that uh, Mr. Rickerman and the committee has prepared. I think that the ordinance as presented is a step forward. Uh, I, I don't think it's enough. I think the neighborhoods in the community have asked for our support and this is not enough to uh, show the support by reducing the hours that these bars are open. Uh, I will probably vote for this ordinance but I have Discuss three amendments with my colleagues this afternoon in the work session, and one of the three got accepted. So I'm very pleased we got we got one of the ordinance, <laughs> or one of the amendments. So I'd like to propose amendment number two uh, of my three amendments, which 
adds that a, a certification and an, by an inspector approved by the city that the location is in compliance with applicable building and fire codes be added to the ordinance as drafted by our attorney. That's the one y'all agreed on earlier, all right? All right? Yeah. Let me ask, so, let me ask Howard a question. Howard, is that that second amendment, was that with the change? Yes, with the change. Uh, yeah, I accept the amendment. All right. All right. All right. So um, with that, uh, we'll move the previous question. Clark Calderon. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. All right. I believe there are no items discussed during the work session that need to come back this evening, Mayor Benjamin. Um, I think there are two committee referrals, um, right, one Mr. being Mr. Rickman's referral, um, which I think our direction was to schedule a committee of the whole, kind of an extension of the Economic and Community Development Committee um, sometime in July. And you, I'll let you articulate the subject matter. I, I called it construction strategies and growth for the city of Columbia. I think that sums it up very well, Ms. Yes, Wilson. Sir. Thank All right. you. So, um, and this is gonna be a committee of the whole? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Like a work session. It's another council meeting. I'm okay. sorry. Another council meeting. All right. Okay. <laughs> work All right. session. All right. Work session. Okay. We checked your calendar. All right. So we're gonna we we have we scheduled that? Uh, uh, um, we have not yet scheduled that. Sometime in July, we'll look at the dates that will work for the for everybody. Um, but we are also amending the schedule to at a May 29th meeting of council as well, right? And that's a budget work yeah. session. Yes, yeah. sir. At two o'clock. Okay. All right. And then uh, you have an additional you know, that item requires, as well. that, Mr. Rickman, that doesn't require a vote, though, uh, unless you guys, I mean, the, uh, nope. uh, the construction, construction jobs. Okay. It's a referral as well as item right. 49. Um, the council's asked to refer the proposed demolition delay ordinance uh, to the Arts and Historic Preservation Committee for further review. Um, so second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Move the previous question? Court call roll? I'm sorry. Well, no, I was going to say just a question. Um, we decided, have we appointed somebody to convene that meeting? Um, who t who's a, oh, who's well, it? Who's, so who's yeah. the, the committee? Um, Mr. Madera, Madera is the Madera. chair, is and the, um, two, the two, Ms. McDowell and, and I are on the committee. Two of you? So, okay. I, will, I, will, yeah. I, will, I will tell you, with, the, with the, um, the outcry and the grave concern around the women's club that we've all been dealing with this week, I think it's, uh, uh, I, I'm willing if we do it as a committee of the whole, to, to take it up uh, in its entirety, uh, I think we all should probably uh, uh, dig into that too. So I'm not sure if we. Uh, I'm not saying another meeting, uh, but <laughs> but uh, maybe the maybe the same meeting. It's something we should all take up uh, together. Yes, as opposed as opposed to just arts and historic preservation. Let's all talk about it. The, uh, this this a lot of related items this, uh, today somewhat to this in a way so we could all we, we could just include that at the july night i mean the july meeting when yeah we set the the, i mean obviously this this um this blossom this discussion of course I know mr davis gets going about the elmore uh store uh discussion from several years ago is something we need to go ahead and, and um and act on so let's just take it all together all, all right so just add that to the agenda i withdraw the motion to, to send that to the committee yes. okay and I think we're, we're thinking 7 p.m., y'all. All right. All right. Mr. So let's go ahead and start the uh, 7 p.m. Uh, zoning and planning public hearing. Let's um, uh, those items that require significant dialogue. If y'all don't mind, let's 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 do those last. Okay. Okay. So we will need take some Ms. Hampton's lead on that. Yeah. We, we generally have those lined up for oh, you. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Good evening. This evening we start with annexations and land use. So the first is at 2916, a request to annex a sign a land use classification of UCAC2 and a zoning of general commercial. All right. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of or against this item? Saying none, is there a motion? Move. Is there a second? second? All right. Discussion with the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. An annexation at 638, a portion of Bluff Road. This is a request to annex, assign a land use classification of UCAC1 
and assign a zoning classification of general commercial. Is anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Saying none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? We'll move the previous question. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Devine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. An annexation at 1321 Piney Grove Road. This is a request to annex, assign a land use classification of UEMR, and assign a zoning classification of general residential. Is anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Mr. Davis, have a motion? motion? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. We have a major amendment to a planned unit residential district. This is at 2.16 acres on the south side of Kaufman Road. This major amendment is to facilitate the change of use. This was designated as medical and health care in the PUD. The request is to change it to allow for the use of a church. So I move. Oh, excuse is me. There a second? Probably need to ask if anybody's. I'm sorry, is anyone here speak in favor of or against this? All right. Uh, motion by Mr. Rickman. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. A rezoning request at 1908 Blossom Street. This is a request to rezone the parcels from light industrial in the Five Points Overlay District to mixed use district also in the Five Points Overlay District. This is the Mikados. Uh, uh, okay. Is anyone here to speak in favor of in favor of this? Please. Good evening. I'm uh, Josh Booker with Lambert Architects. Um, just wanted to make this brief, hopefully, but uh, we're requesting to rezone two of those parcels at 1908 Blossom Street from M1 Light Industrial to MX1 Mixed Use Development. Uh, this request is being made to be consistent with the surrounding parcels and is in line with the City of Columbia's future land use plan and future five development guidelines for this location. We've met with the neighborhoods, uh, we've met with Five Points Association in the city several times, um, and we would just like to reinforce that this discussion is really about, um, strictly about zoning, and how that rezoning can create a better climate for any kind of development on those parcels. I also have the uh, owner, um, Mr. Mocker, here as well, if there's any additional questions uh, addressed to him. Um, do you, can I make a statement, or no, all right? All right, um, I think I have several citizens who may have speak up, who may have signed up to speak against this. Okay, yes ma'am. There's some back here. <laughs> Good evening, my name is David Anderson. I am uh, a member of the board of the Wales Guard Neighborhood Association. And um, we have several people lined up to speak uh, about the development. Um, basically, the first point I'd like to make is, is it, we believe that this development does violate the, master, the Five Points Master Plan as adopted by City Council several years ago. Um, and it really complicates, it will complicate the traffic situation down on Blossom Street. Um, Last November, we did have a neighborhood meeting to discuss the request, and in fact, the owner um, attended that meeting and spoke to our neighborhood association. Um, after his presentation, the consensus among the neighbors, uh, the residents, was even more opposed to the development than they were before the meeting. Um, it is overwhelmingly opposed by our residents, as well as the residents of the uh, surrounding neighborhoods. Um, the Planning Commission, as you know, heard this request back in February and voted against the rezoning request, and we ask that you honor their recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There's a question. I just hear a voice. I, don't, I can't even tell who's speaking. And, 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 uh, okay. Well, 
Would you go to yes, ma'am. Well, ma'am, if you if you want to speak, feel 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 free to come up to the microphone um, when 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 recognized. Okay, please do as quietly as possible, if please, if possible, <laughs> please. Yes, ma'am. My name is Judy Holliday. We have lived on Waccamaw Avenue since we bought our home in 1986. So for 32 years, we've lived in the neighborhood of Wales Garden. <coughs> Over the past decade, we've seen a friendly spirit in our diverse community of Wales Garden. But we've seen a, it, it threatened by the changing culture in Five Points. The once charming retail village has rightly gained a reputation for all night partying that has attracted criminals who prey on vulnerable young people. Recent statistics have shown a rise in violent crime and alcohol-related arrests. In the meantime, Wales Garden has become a parade ground for noisy, drunk pedestrians stumbling home in the morning hours, strewing plastic cups, beer cans, and whiskey bottles on our sidewalks and in our yards. My neighbors and I have noticed missing lawn and porch furnishings, smashed car windows, and scratched automobiles. Today, the owner of McAdoo's restaurant has applied to rezone land on the corner of Blossom Street and Saluda Avenue. This parcel of land is located at the northern entrance to Wales Garden, abutting the established homes of our neighborhood. In addition to sandwiches and soup, McAdoo's menu offers 30 hurricane drinks, 19 shooters, 11 bomb shots, nine specialty martinis, and assorted beers and wines. The franchise owner stated publicly <clears throat> last year at our meeting that he made more than 69% of the restaurant's profit from alcohol sales. If this rezoning were granted, McAdoo's would be the first alcohol outlet to be established on Blossom Street from UG all the way down to Beltline Boulevard. It would sit right next door to Wales Garden Residences, unleashing more late night noise, litter, and vandalism into our sleeping community. Do we as a city really want to set a precedent that opens the door for other bars to spread from Five Points into other residential neighborhoods, including Shandon, Martin Luther King, University Hill, we are depending on you as members of the City Council to support the Planning Commission's recommendation to deny the zoning request. Zoning is supposed to protect the public, not enable harm. We hope you will act in the public interest by endorsing the Planning Commission's recommendation to deny the rezoning. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, and I know we have several people who signed up to, to speak. Uh, I, I don't sense there's a will in this council to uh, support this rezoning. I'm prepared to make a, a motion uh, to uh, deny the rezoning, uh, but but certainly anyone who wants to come and speak in favor of or, or against it, uh, it, is, it is it's your prerogative uh, to do so. But no, we have a number of other um, uh, major issues. But if you if you if if you're against it, would you raise your hand against rezoning? And if you're in in favor of rezoning. I mean, but, but you have a prerogative. It, it's your right to come up and speak. But uh, the way we've done many of these in the past, uh, certainly, um, Jim, uh, we recognize, obviously, that um, while Five Points is Five Points, we may have very different um, uh, opinions about what happens in Five Points, that once you cross Blossom Street, it, it, it's, it's a very different world. I mean, you're, you're, you are physically actually uh, then in, in, in Wells Garden. It's a, it's a very different uh, consideration. And we want to, I think uh, that's a a well-held view of, of council. Um, Mr. Daniel, um, please. My, com my comments are brief. Uh, I've been a resident of either Hollywood Rose Hill, Wheeler Hill, or uh, Wales Garden since 1975. I'm probably the only person here that's actually been to one of these restaurants. Uh, my wife and I were in Charlotte over after Christmas and actually went to one which is out near UNC Charlotte. Uh, I could equate it to an Applebee's. Uh, they have a bar when you first walk into the right that comprises about 25% of the building. The other 75% of the building is a typical restaurant, 
organization. The neighborhood has tried to characterize this from the beginning as a bar. It's not. It's a restaurant that has serves alcohol. So sure. I, I would like to at least make this point. I've been to one. I've seen how it's operated. It was not busy because it was Christmas sure. time. Sure. Today is only a zoning change. It's not dealing with any special exceptions. But I think they meet the criteria, and I think they're mischaracterizing this particular facility. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, move denial. Is there a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? With the previous question, Clerk Calderell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. are a little bit out of order. Are, are the next and we would not be offended if all of you left, if you want to go ahead and go. We're used to the mass exodus, uh, 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 so it's all right. <laughs> I'm going to announce the case that Amy Moore is here as well to um, give you a little bit of background, I think would be instructive. This is uh, for the Seminary Ridge Historic District to amend the text of the city code of ordinances um, to change the designation from an architectural conservation district to a protection area. And Amy can give you some background. Amy Moore. Good evening. Hey, Amy. Uh, the case before you today, as Krista said, is to modify the Architectural Conservation District to a protection area. Amy, Amy, Amy. you mind pulling the microphone down or something? Because we can't hear you too well. I know you're soft-spoken, but we, we can't hear you at all. You can't hear me at all? Not, not very well. Can there. That's a, that was Early. better. It was a long way from Krista to me. <laughs> Thank you. So this is, can you hear me now? How about if I hold it? That's, that's what. So this is a request to modify the Seminary Ridge Architectural Conservation District to a protection area, which is another form of a historic district. The Architectural Conservation District has been in existence since 2013, and the neighborhood has recently expressed interest in lessening their review. Therefore, the request is to keep a historic district, but in the form of a protection area. As a recap, protection areas and architectural conservation districts are both considered, as I said, to be historic districts, but have different levels of review. Conservation districts focus on preserving original materials and architectural features, such as windows, doors, siding, et cetera, and original detailing, while protection areas typically have regulations which preserve basic forms, fenestration patterns, and so on, but focus less on keeping original materials and details. So we went through a, a process with the neighborhood to discuss this and get their feedback, work on a new set of guidelines, which I believe were included in y'all's packets tonight. All right. So Amy, I always, I never remember the titles, but I always think it's one, two, and three, because we have three. So where, which one would this be? Uh, this is three. Three, so right, right. we or, have the like landmark. Like Earlwood. Least, least. Yeah, like Earlwood. Right, okay, that's correct. No. All right. Thank you, Amy. Um, we have a number of people who signed up to speak on a number of different matters. Only one specifically uh, references uh, a Seminary Ridge. Um, so if I don't recognize you specifically, please feel free to come up to the microphone and state your name. I have Lance Folsom. <clears throat> Lance Folsom. Uh, we've lived out there since 2008. And our neighborhood association was functioning, but we didn't have very many people coming to our meetings, usually six or 10. And when this was presented to us, it sounded like a good idea. Historic district, you know, property values go up and everything looks better. But we really didn't know what we were getting into. And once it was approved by the city, we soon began to experience some difficulty, especially some of, well, it would have bothered me too. And I don't consider myself low income, but the income range varies a lot in our neighborhood. And quite a few of our neighbors, and not necessarily low incomes, were having trouble replacing the worn out windows that you couldn't open for various reasons. They didn't insulate, and they wanted to put vinyl windows in that insulated and make other energy efficient uh, improvements. 
And I know a number of people on our walk through the neighborhood expressed really dismay that they couldn't do this. And there's at least one landlord that wanted to improve his own, believe it or not, but you know, it was too expensive. So uh, we kicked the idea around about doing something and the city came out and met with us. We had excellent attendance. This generated an awful lot of interest because people had heard about the problems. And so instead of six or 10 people, we had 20, 30 people. Last two meetings of our association, we had about 30. And at the last one, after Amy Moore herded a whole bunch of cats through this process, we voted, I think, 27 to 3 to pursue a protection area as a better fit for our area. A lot of the houses had already had vinyl windows and things, so, but we have a lot of historic character. And so we really appreciate the process now. We know it's a good designation. And, Hats off to the planning department. Those people are outstanding, and they really, they're competent, and they're patient. So we're really lucky to have those kind of people. So we hope you'll help us improve our neighborhood by approving this so, zoning change. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Anyone else here speak in favor of or against this? Please. And if you don't mind, state your name for the, for the record. Thank you. Evening. My name is Mike Kimball. I've uh, uh, also lived in the neighborhood for a while. In fact, my wife and I have lived there for over 40 years. Um, and I was recently elected the president of the uh, Seminary Ridge Neighborhood Association. And we thank you for uh, uh, hearing our request today. <coughs> a little background the Seminary Ridge Neighborhood Association adopted the Architectural Conservation District zoning overlay in February of 2013, years later after discovering the difficulty of being allowed to make certain improvements to our homes. More than just a few residents expressed concern that the regulations were too restrictive, not allowing changes such as replacing windows uh, with energy efficient windows. And conversations after conversations with Sam Davis and uh, city planners, we discovered that we needed that any change would need to come from the, the neighborhood, and that would need to start with a neighborhood association. So several residents walked the neighborhood and looked at every home, their windows, doors, siding, and discovered that approximately. 35% of the residential properties already have energy efficient windows. We talked to a lot of people in our neighborhood and almost everyone agreed that changes were needed, that it wasn't fair that one house could already have new energy efficient windows and the next one, the one next door couldn't. The discussions were started with the associ neighborhood association in the fall of 2017 and at the November meeting, a vote was taken to remove the, the, the architectural conservation designation and study the possibility of adopting a less restrictive overlay such as the protection area plan. Uh, city planners were notified and a plan began to work out the steps. Uh, residents and property owners turned out to attend uh, the planner-led meetings uh, in early in 2018 and the planners gave us the information that we needed on all the options that were available. The Neighborhood Association again met during that time to discuss our options and affirm our previous motion to replace our current zoning overlay with a less restrictive but still historic protection area overlay. Residents and property owners have been notified by flyers, mail, email, Facebook, and signs were posted throughout the neighborhood for the various meetings conducted by both the city planners and the neighborhood association, as well as even this meeting with city council. Every resident and property owner had an opportunity to offer their opinions about the changes, either in person or in writing, and many of them did with the vast majority being in favor. I might add too that we had one neighbor that was against this and at our last neighborhood meeting, he, he said he was with us. He, uh, he withdrew his complaint. Uh, residents and property owners have turned out at every meeting. Um, we've been here um, at, the, at the DDRC meeting, at the, uh, at the uh, Planning Commission meeting. We've had greater neighborhood involvement than we had in past years. We've done our homework, dotted our I's and crossed our T's. As Sam Davis said at one of our meetings, we have seen democracy in action. We really believe the protection area overlay offers us the best of both worlds. We retain our historic district designation. Um, we'll still have the protection that new homes will have to be reviewed by city planners and the DDRC, as would demolition of any existing homes. And they'll retain the original look by not undergoing drastic changes to roof lines and pitches and strange looking additions. Residents will be, still be able to take advantage of the Bailey Bill. We have one neighbor that is doing that now. Um, and uh, and we have, all of us will be able to take advantage of energy efficient uh, 
windows or even cement fiber siding. So I want to thank uh, Amy Moore, Sam Davis, and all of you for uh, listening to us today. We ask, we come before you asking you that you would approve these changes. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. President. That was perfectly timed, too. Perfectly. It's like right on, right on the line there. Good deal. Anyone else speaking in favor of or against? Or is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve right, the sir. request. Second. Moving probably second. And discussion. Ms. Devine. I just want to say I thank y'all for this process and you know this has come up in a couple neighborhoods and I think y'all telling us kind of what happened in 2013 and then be willing to go through this process really shows as Sam said democracy in action. I think a lot of people were confused as to certain things and that's why we have three different designations. What works in one neighborhood might not be appropriate for another but certainly being able to have the conservation district or the Pres protection district or the landmark district, whatever fits your neighborhood, is good. Um, and so I, I like that we've been able to go through this process, hear your concerns, and address it in that way. Um, the only thing I would add, Krista and Amy, is um, Howard and I spoke with some residents who heard this was happening and they were concerned at the a tidal wave of it happening in lots of neighborhoods. And one of the things that we really thought is, is communication is key. Um, making sure that the neighborhoods understand what the, the districts are, what they can and cannot do. And I think there's a lot of misinformation about what people can and cannot do in, in different um, districts. So if we could just keep abreast of that and make sure we push out information so that people understand that they know they can con contact Amy at any time with any questions. I think the fear of the unknown is what has started a lot of people concerned that this might go one way or another, but I think recognizing that every neighborhood is unique and different and the neighborhood itself is in the best position to decide what's best for them. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Thank you all. Item, you have two separate items with items 39 and 40. However, 40 is precipitated by 39, and I will explain. Uh, 39 is at 700 Gervais Street. This is a request to rezone the parcel from light industrial um, with a design development overlay and an InnoVista design overlay and a design preservation overlay to our mixed-use urban district with just the ID and the DP. Um, the parcels in question here, the owner of the, the uh, 700 Gervais is uh, looking to acquire the rear parcel, the MX2 parcel. Okay. So we would have one ownership of both of these parcels. Um, as you know, you cannot um, develop across zoning district lines. So to facilitate development on this parcel, we need one zoning classification. Um, M2 is a heavy industrial zoning. Obviously, that would not be the appropriate zoning classification to recommend. So we recommended going with the MX2, which is our InnoVista zoning classification. Um, however, that brings with it uh, unlimited height, which is fine and, and appropriate for that district. However, if the MX2 were to now come up to Gervais Street, that is a historic district. So the second um, item on your agenda number 40 would be to modify the InnoVista design guidelines um, to include a stepped height overlay that was recommended in the West Gervais Street plan that you recently reviewed that was vetted mm -hmm. with the neighbors in the area. So it would go from a 55 to an 80 to 150 to the unlimited height in that district. So you've got number 39, which is to consolidate the zoning, make it one. Um, and then the second item is to provide that height protection for the historic district. Do we Thank need you. to take those separately or together? Was, in, yeah, please. Uh, um, it, 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 we'll do them separately. You, you probably want to have separate votes yeah. on those. Yeah. Um, however, in, in staff's mind, if you do rezone the front portion, Oh, you know, the, the second one needs to be attended to it. <laughs> it's kind of important. Uh, is there anyone here speak against this? Another, the, 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 all right, okay. I wasn't, I was, I was asking the question. I wasn't calling you up yet. Okay. 
I, I, would, I wouldn't, I'm sorry, I wasn't sure. I certainly want to give the proponent an opportunity to speak first. Uh, Counselor, are you, are you speaking or Ben, who's, who's going to speak? And then I'll have you up, sir. Mr. Mayor, my name is Bob Fuller. I am here this evening representing Ben Arnold, who is actually the applicant on the proposition. We do not have, as we know, any neighborhood opposition to the proposal that has been made. It really is an opportunity to consolidate the zoning in a single pattern on the title ownership of a joined piece of property to avoid the conflicts that might arise of trying to uh, develop across zoning lines on a single piece of property. We think that everybody that has been talked to in the neighborhoods, both the commercial and the residential people that Ben has talked to, that others have talked to, and the recommendation of the Planning Commission, which was unanimous, is, is what we are seeking to have happen this afternoon. So we, we think people are in concert and agreement with it and uh, urge your support of it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ben. Sir, please, the floor is yours. Thank you for your patience. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. My name is Robert Lewis, um, and, and I'm here to uh, speak against uh, item number 40. Uh, we have used that for years as parking for stagehands for the Colonial Life Arena, and we would have no place to park, which means we would have no, we would have no place to uh, park as we load in and out events at the Colonial Life Arena and the uh, Columbia Convention Center. Uh, we have no objection to any, any plans uh, Ben Arnold has. Certainly, they've been a asset to this community, so we don't have any objections as far as height or anything with just we would lose the parking, and we need that for work. So you run the private park? I'm sorry, you, you work with? Uh, we, we park uh, along the 1100 block of Wayne Street. Okay. And uh, without that parking, I don't know where we would park for work. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here speak in favor of or against it? Rick? Yes. I'm uh, Richard Rowe, president of the Vista Neighborhood Association, and the applicant uh, called us and asked if he could come and go over his application and his uh, ideas to develop this property. Our development committee reviewed that. They were in favor of it, and I uh, just want to make that note that that's full of favor of the Vista Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if anyone else on here um, signed up to speak on this item. Um, um, I, I move approval. Uh, we can yeah, do a discussion just, period just, after that. I just wanted okay. to make question. The, the, the property is actually cuts off before the street, if I read the map right, correct? Before Pendleton? Yeah. It's just that square. It doesn't cross over, right? Correct. Yeah, there's still a right of way. Yeah, it's just the, it just squares out the, the big piece. That's what I thought. Our screens aren't up, by the way. This Ooh, Teresa, our, screen, our, screens our screens are not are not up. Uh, uh, That's um, better. Okay. You Thank see you. The parcel line. Motion, yeah. um, Mr. McDowell. I'll second the motion. Uh, any further discussion? We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Was that 39 or 40? That was 39. Um, which one? 39. That was 39. That was 30. And yeah, now with 40, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Move the previous question. Clark Cotterell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. I'm 41. Yes, sir. N number 41 is a request to rezone. 42.31 acres on the north side of Paget Road. This will be rezoning it from a planned unit development to RS3. The motion. We I'm sorry, is there is there anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Can, can you explain, please, um, Chris, uh, looking at next door, the, uh, I take it UER1 is county? Oh, so actually that is our land use plan that you're looking at there. Okay. So here is our zoning. So 
um, it, it's consistent um, and it will, it is the same, it's honey tree development that we'll be extending. Right. So the UER is our, our land use plan and then this is the zoning classification. So okay. that's the RS. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Certainly. All right. Uh, move the previous question. The clerk, call a roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Bivall. Aye. Mr. Vaughn. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Your final case this evening on your zoning public hearing is a rezoning request at 1400 UG Street. This is a request to rezone the parcel from office and institutional district with the DD overlay to light industrial district, uh, also with the DD overlay. Uh, is anyone here to speak in favor of this, uh, the applicant? Um, please. Mayor Benjamin, <coughs> Councilman, Councilwoman, thanks for having me. Uh, I appreciate all the time the city of Columbia and the local community has given me uh, in working on this project. I know I only have three minutes, so I'll try and make it short and sweet. Um, as a lot of you know, uh, I'm trying to accomplish the rezoning of 1400 UG from C1 to M1 to allow me to build a higher density student housing uh, and partially market rate component project. Um, right now, uh, we have 1328 UG, which has M1 zoning, which we need for 150 beds per acre, and 1400 UG has C1, which only allows another 86 beds. So currently, by right, we can build a 486 bed apartment project, but we would prefer to get the rezoning to increase that size to a 650 bedroom project, uh, which will give us the financial flexibility to include a big list of compromises and compatibility requirements that we've been working on with the Vista Guild and the Vista Neighborhood Association. Um, at planning staff, they recommended that this not be rezoned to M1 due to potential industrial uses. Uh, we presented to planning commission and stated our case that industrial uses were not financially feasible on this project and that we were planning to build apartments and I think they realized that and Planning Commission voted seven to two to recommend approval at City Council. Um, but up to the rezoning hearing, which we had scheduled in March, we uh, recognized some opposition with the Vista Neighborhood Association, which many are here to speak against tonight, and uh, the Vista Guild. So we came back and we've been working collaboratively with both the VNA and the Vista Guild for our best efforts to make this project compatible with the Vista and the City of Columbia. So we gave a letter of good faith to the Vista Guild and the neighborhood saying, if we get this rezoning, we will include a big list of compromises and concessions that will actually make a bigger project better for the community. Bigger isn't always better in this case, uh, but we believe in this case it is. Um, we weren't able to land on an agreement with the neighborhood or the city because there isn't a mechanism with the city to hold us to this list. But we're putting our name and reputation that if we're able to get this rezoning, we are going to include a big list to make this project compatible with the neighborhood with sidewalk and streetscape improvements, exterior facade improvements above and beyond, uh, overnight full-time security every single night of the year. Um, we'll connect huge up to Lady Street sidewalks, which currently there's no pathway for that due to how it's built out right now. Um, we'll have unit mix diversification, including studios ones and twos, to make this a compatible project. Um, so we appreciate the time and everybody working with us thus far. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to have a few. Folks who signed up specifically referencing Huge Street, but there may be some who are concerned but, but did not specifically reference Huge Street. So if I miss you, please uh, feel free to, uh, to come up. Uh, David Hilburn? David? David? Thank you, Mayor and Council. Didn't know it was going to be first up here. Uh, That's a gift for being early, man. Uh, yeah. Or there late. You go. 
Well, I've been a member, uh, I've been a um, resident of downtown, specifically this location of probably less than a quarter of a mile since 2001. And it's just not the right place for student housing. And it's not about number of beds. For me, I've watched Hugie Street become more and more and more busy. And I think you need to realize one thing is going to happen, and we're going to see a lot of students die crossing the street. <laughs> Safety. There's no way to protect the students on Hugie Street. Absolutely no way. There's got to be a better plan and a healthier way to use this piece of property than just for student housing. Um, I've lived right around the corner for it, and I can tell you what happens. If they try to shoot across to Hugie Street to get to Canal Park, you can't do it. And now you really can't do it. Um, I know a lot of people are going to speak on other things, but safety, number one thing to me. I watch it every day. Um, the second thing I would say about the location is um, that, you know, we get really busy when the students are here. But on May 15th, it's going to be a dead zone between May 15th and August 15th. What's that going to do to the VISTA? We're trying to, you know, we've worked really hard. I know with Santel, we've made VISTA kind of a destination to go to. And we're going to spike it. And it's going to seem like your ups and downs. And that doesn't seem very appropriate. Uh, the Renaissance, when it was built, was a permanent residence. You got permanent lifestyles there. People, with, people who want to spend money stay in the community and walk to the community. Businesses won't survive on a spike level. They just won't do it, not there. So I hope that um, the city will deny the zoning and that we'll look for a better alternative for the location. It's a great piece of property. Student housing is not, that's not the place for it. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, Jim, I'm gonna try 1324 Pulaski Street. I'm sorry, Jim, I can't read your handwriting, brother. That's quite all right. My name is Jim Fenner. Jim Thank Fenner. you for letting okay. me speak this evening. Thank you. Pleasure. I will be brief. <laughs> <laughs> no, matter, no matter how long it takes, right? Yes, sir. I am a parent of five children, who have proud, four children who have proudly attended Un University of South Carolina. As we all know, students sometimes take the path of least resistance. They may not go out onto UG Street to get to the campus. They may try to go down Pulaski Street, a very narrow, winding street that winds around Publix department or uh, supermarket. And if you want some entertainment without cable, sit in the public parking lot and watch the traffic go by. Then they're going to have to try to shoot across Gervais Street and down Pulaski to get to the campus. And as we all know, college students may not get up early enough to make that 8 o'clock class. They're going to try and drive that way. It's pretty much too far for a lot of college students that I know of to walk or would be willing to walk. And I think there would be better use than student housing there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fenner. Uh, Deborah Rowe? Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to give me a chance to express my opposition to the rezoning of the property at 1400 UG Street. As residents in Raleigh prior to retiring in Columbia, my husband and I witnessed the renaissance of the downtown residential environment. We knew then that that was the lifestyle that we wanted for ourselves, but we wanted it in our hometown of Columbia. We found that in the Vista. Since relocating here, we have worked to be part of the community, making financial and personal investments in our neighborhood. As neighbors, we have enhanced the beauty through spearheading and providing a major financial investment in the wraps on the electrical boxes. We have organized our neighbors into a neighborhood association and joined in with Arsenal Hill to host events and to work on common issues. Many of our neighbors have joined the Congaree Vista Guild to provide input and assistance to them as needed. We realized when we moved there that development would be around us as the Vista grew, 
and we have celebrated the success of these developments. We participated in the West Gervais Historical Plan. We have assisted in city-sponsored activities such as pedestrian counting, police roll call, national night out, marking drain culverts, etc. Make no mistake, we are an active, involved neighborhood association. Growth for growth's sake is dangerous because you run the risk of destroying the integrity of the neighborhood and the district. This project is not smart growth. It threatens the property values of our complex and the potential development on the Klein and SCNG property. High concentration of students in a complex that is basically a private dorm is not conducive to the lifestyle and allure of the Vista. We do not oppose students. In fact, we have students living in the units in our complex and we live in harmony. However, in our complex, we enjoy an appropriate age mix. Experience with large concentration of students show an increase in littering, excessive noise, late night escapades, and an increase in crime rate. The current zoning will allow the developer a minimum of 484 beds with 363 parking spaces. The rezoning would up that to 650 students with 488 parking spaces. The prospects of having 650 students in a location that does not have adequate infrastructure to support that high concentration is frightening. Pulaski Street is a narrow two-lane road with no street parking beyond 1318 Pulaski. Putting five or 600 more cars on Pulaski will create safety issues. There is already pedestrian traffic from Hampton Street to Lady Street with no sidewalks. We have accommodated this foot traffic to lower, because of lower vehicular traffic, but putting that many more vehicles on a narrow two-lane road is asking for an accident. There is no additional room for street parking, and this project alone will require more parking for the tenants than is promised by the developer. Is that my time? Oh, sorry. This will not allow parking for their guests or ours. She's so much more graceful than you are, Rick, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Businesses on Lady Street, from the railroad overpass to UG and all of Pulaski, from Gervais to Hampton, will be left with no parking for their customers. Vehicular traffic will increase significantly on Lady Street. We see our business, we want to see our business succeed, but many of these students will not be utilizing the facilities due to the higher cost of dining facilities and in the Vista. As neighbors, we support these establishments individually and collectively as a neighborhood association. With more students, we suspect that future development of the Vista will result in more fast food facilities and bars to accommodate the students. We all want more residential development, but it needs to be more diverse. We don't need the Vista to become student mecca as is Five Points. This is a pivotal project that will determine the future of the Vista. Please don't sacrifice the allure of the Vista for short-term gain. Protect the integrity of the Vista through the continued support of the city plan and reject this rezoning request. Thank you for giving me Thank the you. additional. Thank you, Mrs. Rowe. Thank you. <laughs> now I am going to cut the applause off, okay? All right. Rick, uh, you're up, and then Bert, uh, will you follow Rick? or Bert and Rick, or? Good evening, my name is Bart Walrath and I'm a resident of the Vista. I'd like to start out by saying Arsenal Hill and Vista neighborhoods do not want 1400 UG rezoned light industrial. We'd like to see that denied tonight, but we'd also like to see that get off the table so that we can work with 908 on their option that does not require rezoning. I also have another concern in that I think the student housing bubble is ready to burst in Columbia. Demand is decreasing. USC and nationwide, nationwide enrollment is leveling off. 
Increasing numbers of students are opting for online education and two-year degrees versus four-year degrees. Charleston Post and Courier had an article about a year ago talking about the uh, decline in the student housing boom in Columbia. While that's happening, capacity has increased. Over 2,800 beds downtown in the last three years since the hub, with 770 more in the pipeline to be added, under construction to be added shortly. And USC has approved 3,700 to be built on the south campus. All that is leading to dropping occupancy. Occupancy rates currently are 36 to 100%, and proximity to campus is the primary driver. The station at Five Points, which is three blocks closer to USC than the proposed dormitory, is now less than 75% occupied for the coming year, and that, the coming school year, and all those occupants are not students. Approved projects have been delayed or canceled. And what if it's rezoned to light industrial, and then the project is not built? As was mentioned, I think, by Brad, you know, then chemical dealers, petroleum product warehouses, and dry cleaning plants would be able to build in the light industrial zoning. And if, it, and if it's built and goes belly up, four, five, and six bedroom units are the most difficult, if not impossible, to repurpose. Please deny the zoning change to light industrial and do it right the first time. Thank you. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Rick. All right. My name is Rick Rowe, and I'm president of the Vista Neighborhood Association and also a part of the Vista Gill. My wife and I moved to the Vista in 2006 and full-time in 2007. We enjoy the neighborhood and the art atmosphere and the ability to walk for the items that we use to sustain our lives. When we bought our property, we lived on the outskirts of the neighborhood. I cleaned up bottles, cans, trash, and all kinds of material on Pulaski Street. One of my daily routines was to pick up trash on Lady Street because little was done on the west end of Lady and Gervais. That has changed in 2018. And I have been involved in seeing the change take place by working with neighbors, businesses, and organizations to see that we make improvements. One of my first experiences as the president of the COA at Renaissance Plaza was dealing with several college-age living college-age students living in our complex. It was like living in a town in a Wild West movie. There was no control. It took a stern hand and residents that were concerned about the community they live in. Now, 12 years later, we have a great board, we have a great COA, and we have a Vista Neighborhood Association that continues to improve the area in which we live. The density of the people in the Vista is a great concern to me. We need variety, and we need people that are willing to make our city a better place, not just a place to accumulate and maybe get an education in the meantime. I sound as though I'm negative on students. I have been one myself, and my wife and I have raised three. I reside in the Vista because it is the lifestyle I choose. Like, all, like an always sought to be able to enjoy in retirement. I like to see improvements and I like to see growth because that is what progress means. The Vista Neighborhood Association wants to see growth, but it needs to be density adjusted to the space. We do not need to overcome, be overcome by any large number of individuals being away from home for the first time. We need market rate and if teenagers and young adults choose to live there, then so be it. Dealing with noise and trash and associated problems is not what I want to deal with. I know from listening to the reports from our CPD at VNA meetings, the statistics on auto break-ins and stolen properties 
always goes up when the students come to town. <laughs> Increase the numbers and the issues for safety and crime will go up. I just want to make a note here that the Vista Neighborhood Association voted unanimously to oppose the zoning change for this piece of property. And we're here tonight to make sure that we see that that happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jim Caldwell, resident of the Vista, uh, work and live there, and um, I also am a member of the um, uh, Vista Neighborhood Association and Vista Guild. And uh, congratulations to you guys, Delta Sky Magazine, uh, Columbia's come back, and you've got here, Columbia's moment is now. Uh, as residents, we can't agree with that more. Uh, it absolutely is now. It's a turning point. You've got 2035 in mind. You need to have the next generation in mind. Um, so I'm up here after talking with a number of residents. A few of us have met with the 908 group, but not the entire neighborhood association. I wanted you to know that. We, like you, have complicated lives. Not everyone can make it up here. Some don't want to speak, so we're up here. That's who you're seeing. We see ourselves as invested in the community, stable. We're H-tax drivers. There's people in here to eat out uh, six to seven times a week. Not always in the Vista, but in and around Columbia. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the county has given us an opportunity lost here, and I just want to let some numbers speak here for a minute. The H tax, as you guys know, in the Vista is $2 million in, in 2017. That's not to pick on the other neighborhoods, but that's three times Center City and two times Five Points. Why is that? We have bigger bills. You have restaurants like Blue Marlin and so on where people are going and they can, and they can spend their money and spend a big bill so it ends up with more tax dollars for you. Students can't afford this. Um, it's said sometimes that we're against development. We're not against development. Uh, in fact, since my wife and I moved here in 2013, we've seen a half a billion dollars and more in, in investment in the Vista. And you guys know us. We worked with planning on, on a couple of um, the um, Western Bay historic plan and, and the comprehensive plan. But we have we oppose very little. This one's just not not right, and we're asking you to deny the rezoning and get it right in the first time. When we did meet with 908, there was a representative that said that Columbia's middle market. That hurt. Uh, we don't agree with that. We're better than this. We don't. If you build a, a large student dorm, you're going to end up with middle market. Uh, we, if we head down market rate apartments or condominiums, we can lift ourselves up, and we should do that. Um, we don't think any of these options that we've got today, uh, 908's given us basically a kind of a false dilemma. On the one hand, we have a rezoning request to get up to 725 beds, which is what the application reads. And you've already heard about traffic problems on either side. You've got one side that's completely congested and the other side that's basically a county road. So that's not a very good choice. And then the other choice, uh, we've got no compromises as we stand today on it at all. Um, properties adjacent to the Western Bay, Western Bay Historic Protection Area, as you can see, and it's a slippery slope if you head down this path. As Bart said, there's no convertibility down the road. Think about 2035, think about the next generation. And we want you to go with the staff on this one and uh, deny the rezone request. And thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Ms. Mary Langston, she had to leave, okay. Um, uh, Ms. Walrath, is, is, is Maria here, Bart? Oh, Bart. Mr. Mayor and Council, I appreciate the opportunity to speak Tonight, I'm going to keep it quick. Um, I've got some bullet points that I just want to run through. A lot of what I've got to say has already been said. But um, in brief, high-density student dorm-style housing is not the right project for this location. It's going to negatively impact property values. 
is going to neg negatively impact the quality of my life. Um, the infrastructure required to accommodate the increased population is woefully inadequate. The project is inconsistent with the VISTA's identity as Columbia's Arts and Entertainment District. Consider that in addition to this project, student housing is located at Assembly in Pendleton and Pulaski in Green. The heart of the VISTA is becoming swallowed up by student housing. The Empire, which is at Pendleton and Assembly, will have 688 beds. Green Street Crossing, which is on the other side of Pulaski, has 600. This project's application is for 725 beds. That's an increase of over 2,000 students in the area. You change the composition of the population in the Vista that much, and you're going to change the character of the district. In my view, this property is situated at a highly visible corridor with traffic flowing between the city and I-126. It's a gateway to the river on the west and the Congaree Vista neighborhood on the east. I firmly believe that it's a prime piece of real estate. I have a grander vision for this corner of Columbia. This is not smart growth. I respectfully request you deny their application to rezone. Thank you. Thank you. Did you just give your wife a standing ovation? <laughs> smart, smart Suck man, up. smart man. Uh, Steve Henson. Hi, y'all. Appreciate y'all uh, listening to us today. Uh, my wife and I are residents of the Vista. We moved there five or six years ago, seven almost, and we love it. We love going to the Vista. We got to eat seven days a week, <laughs> and uh, many of us do. And the council and the staff have done a wonderful job developing the Vista, and it's really wonderful. We're in the West Gervais, uh, West Gervais Historic District, and we also look at the City Center of Columbia Comprehensive Plan and everything's going great. But there's kind of a disturbance in the neighborhood. And the disturbance is that they want to come next to us and build 650 uh, student housing beds, maybe up to 725. And I want all y'all to think what you'd feel like in Blythewood or Shannon or Heathwood or Waverly or Cottontown if somebody came next door and built 725 beds. Probably wouldn't like it too much because this is our home. Um, and the developer's asking us to ignore the current zoning and change the zoning to an M1, which is kind of an archaic zoning uh, anyway. So the neighborhood is against it, and the staff's against it, because it goes against the plan that they've worked so hard for all these years. It's not just the residents. Colum Columbia metropolitan area, I believe, is about 900,000 people. So this is the entertainment and dining district for that area, not just residents and also for visitors. I was going to say it was the adult entertainment district, but I thought maybe, <laughs> maybe I'd use some different wording. Um, and also, when parents come to town, regardless of where the kids live, they take them to the Blue Marlin, they take them to, to uh, Motor Supply, they take them to the Vista to eat. They don't take them to Five Points to eat. Um, so that's where we're coming from. And I've talked to a lot of y'all, all of y'all about true. this, and uh, we think it's a slippery slope. Now, some folks don't think it's going to go that way. But I think we might be heading toward dollar beer and all-night bars. And... Um, that's not good. If you look at Five Points, you go like, where'd Garibaldi's go? It's gone. We used to go there for our anniversary. Where's Harper's? It's gone. I ate lunch at the gourmet shop today, but they close at six o'clock. They don't hang around at night. So, and we know, we've had documented today what's going on in Five Points, which is a real problem. And we just want to protect our neighborhood from that. Um, and like I said, it's also attempting the area right across the river, out of Richland County and out of our city limits is growing also. So we've got to be careful not to let people take that short trip across the Gervais Street Bridge and, and lose some of our tax revenue that way. Um, anyway, we've talked to all y'all and developers have talked to all y'all and um, a lot of people want to compromise. We've talked about compromise. But the developer's idea of compromise is you do redo the zoning and we'll give you a little more brick and we'll give you a sidewalk. That's not a compromise. Our answer to that is no. What we see as a compromise is this. We don't want any student housing there. We don't want any student housing. 
But a compromise is to leave the zoning exactly like it is, go with the plan the city has set up, and we'll get, still get a student housing place with 484 beds instead of 650 or 725. So we'll have a place that we can be happy with. It's not as big. The mayor and our friends will get some extra taxes. Our businesses will get some extra business. And why the neighbors like, why will do I get the happy. taxes? What about the rest of them? They get the taxes too, Everybody right? wants taxes. I want taxes. <laughs> But we'll get a little extra taxes, we'll get a little extra business, and we'll keep the neighbors a lot happier. Um, you guys have a lot of issues. You get issues all the time. Everybody's after you. You're going to meet from 2 o'clock till 8.30 or something tonight, so we understand that. But in the Vista right now, there's only one issue, and this is it. And uh, we don't want to complicate it. Uh, the question is, should we rezone from C1 to M1? Doesn't have anything to do with bricks. Doesn't have anything to do with sidewalks. And we'd ask you to please stick with the residents and with the staff and, and vote no on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And Jonathan, I'm going to give it a try. Uh, but is it Comison? I can't, I can't really read it. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I've, I've come from Arsenal Hill, from a neighboring neighborhood. I'm the president. And I look around the night. Thank you. I see a crowd full of folks who are homeowners, are stakeholders, and actively involved in the community. I see a small group of developers over there. But I do not see any students here begging the council to approve this zoning change because they need more housing. I believe Mr. Walrath hit the nail on the head. We already have enough. The market is speaking right now. Occupancy rates are low and they're falling. We didn't make these numbers up. We got them straight from USC. We know what the occupancy rates are. We know that the further a housing unit is from campus, the lower the occupancy rates will be. Here's what we also know. This isn't student apartments. These are dormitories, let's call them what they are. They are appropriate for only one use, and that is housing students. You have six bedrooms, six bathrooms, and one common area. You cannot rent that as what folks call a market rate apartment. I'd like the council to strongly consider what will happen when the bubble finished bursting. It's deflating right now. We know that for a fact, we have the numbers. What is going to happen to this development in the middle of the Vista. This development is on the plot of land that joins my neighborhood to the Vista. What am I gonna walk past when I'm taking my child to the museum? I promise you and I guarantee you it's not gonna be a thriving community of students. It will not be that when they finish and it will not be that five years from now when I'm still here and they'll be long gone. When we will all still be here and they will all be long gone. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council, we are here because we are homeowners, we are property owners, we are taxpayers. We are invested in this community for the long haul. We know that 1400 UG Street is an eyesore. I know I practiced in that courthouse for years. I can't wait to see the day that it gets torn down. We are pro-development. We have talked about this. We know that some folks are interested in purchasing that land for a boutique hotel. I believe uh, Jim was the one that said, throw me a shovel if that comes to pass. We'll start digging. We're simply asking that we take the long view on this. Um, I was supposed to come up here and sum up the arguments, but I think they spoke quite well for themselves. I, I want the council to just keep in your minds all the people you have here that are united. Um, I have some neighbors here. I have one who pulled out her iPad at our last neighborhood meeting and spontaneously started collecting signatures, which I emailed to every single one of you uh, this past weekend. Every one of the homeowners in all of the neighborhoods surrounding this development, every single one opposes this zoning change and with good reason. I'd ask that you bear that in mind when you're considering this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Jim Daniel. All right. All right. Uh, is
Has anyone else signed up to speak um, in favor of or against this item? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, my name is Alan Amsler, and I am president of McCrory Construction Company. Um, in full disclosure, we've been working with uh, the 908 group for the last six months. Um, when we're out looking for a, pros a prospective project, we're looking for people or groups to work with that have similar values and, and levels of integrity. And we have found that in the, in the 908 group. They're not going to. They're not going to build a project that we all will be proud of um, on this particular site. Now let me, let me change gears for one minute because I'm also the managing member of 522 Lady Street, which is a office building that we re redeveloped three years ago. So we are a resident of the community. I'm the only business person up here speaking tonight, or at least so far. I've heard a lot of residents speak and I understand their position, but I can't think of too many business owners that would oppose this opportunity. Uh, I want to, there is one thing I do want to address. We, we did the project at the corner of Blossom and Hugie uh, for Park 7 called Park Place, and it's just south of 600 beds. They are at 100% occupancy. The project in, in Five Points um, Station is 99% occupied with a 75% reservation rate for August as of February. So I'm sure that's even higher right now. Um, there, there's, there's a selfish part of this um, from a Corey standpoint. I think you all have seen the numbers on construction employment and the fact that um, this area, this community needs construction jobs. And we are a local company um, who brings in local, local subcontractors as well. Now, I can't speak on behalf of the 908 group. But they can certainly put this project up as currently zoned on a part of that property. I think they're, they're, they're going above and beyond. And I can't say that I see too many developers doing that to make improvements to the community, to the, to the sidewalks, and making sure that they do this right. And I hope that you can support their request to change zoning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is anyone else here to speak in favor of or against this item? Please. Good evening, my name is Joe Lockhart. I'm a resident of Renaissance Plaza. I've lived in the Vista for eight years. I'm here to add my voice in opposition uh, to this zoning change. <clears throat> if there's one thing I hope you've heard here tonight, it's not really the voice of opposition. It's the voice of support of residents who you've heard extensively from tonight, who believe in the Vista. You've been listening tonight to people who are speaking in favor of 20 years of successful, remarkable development of the Vista, creating really a, a, a hallmark, a landmark for really development in the Southeast, I believe, that this city can be proud of. You're listening to people who have a commitment, a passion. That is what I've heard tonight, and I heard each of, I, I hope that each and every one of you have heard that deep passion, that commitment to Columbia, to the Vista, the people here are not, who have spoken are not merely residents. They are participants in this ongoing endeavor to build something bigger and ongoing for this city. Uh, really, would we have the development we've seen you know, with uh, the ballpark, with Bull Street, with Main Street, were it not for the Vista, were it for not the people who had the commitment to believe in the Vista, to have that vision and remain and retain that commitment each and every day that they live there. The people who have spoken tonight, I know many of them. When we talk, we don't talk about what we oppose, we talk about what we see, the excitement of what the Vista can be. We know the students are a huge and central component to making Columbia successful, the University of South Carolina and the other fine universities and colleges in this town. But it is that point of balance, right? It is that mixed use not only development, mixed use business, but mixed use residents, okay? There's sound thought and consideration behind the efforts made by <clears throat> those responsible for planning in the city who zone the density for specific and thoughtful reasons. 
And what I would implore each of you to do tonight is consider the, the thoughtful work behind those planning decisions, those density considerations made uh, a while back, okay, that have led to the zoning that we currently have. Pair that with the passion and commitment you heard tonight, the devotion of people who work each and every day to make the Vista and therefore Columbia a much better place to live, who do so not only for now but for the future. Because the people here tonight are speaking not in opposition, they're speaking in favor of what the VIST is, what Columbia is, what Columbia can be. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. You get the best body language award tonight. How about that? <laughs> that's, not, that's not usually New Jersey body language, I might add. But that was a joke, y'all. Anyway. Please, please. First, I wanted to address the fact that we obviously still have more work to do. And I wanted to let council and the Vista Neighborhood Association, many of you know, Rick, Bart, Steve, uh, who I've met with, that we still want to work with you. Um, and we're trying. Uh, and on a couple things, you know, I wanted to address and set the record straight on a few things, which I think Alan Amsler did. One, uh, 650 beds is the maximum project size we can do with this rezoning, not 725. So 650 is what we're looking for. Two, student housing demand, uh, like Alan Amsler said, um, station at five points is currently 99% occupied, 75% pre-lease for this coming year, which is better occupancy and demand than any other market I'm doing business in. Uh, the Empire, Park Place, Green Crossing, 650 Lincoln, all the purpose-built student housing facilities within close proximity to the University of South Carolina are all 95% or higher pre-leased for this coming year as of February. Best market I'm looking in. Um, we will have more than enough parking. We're required to build 75% parking per bed on this site, which is more than any of our other projects we have. So I, I believe we'll have some empty parking um, on site. Uh, so those are a few things I wanted to mention. Uh, and, and just to the Vista Neighborhood Association as well, um, and I know we've talked about this for, before, and to City Council, uh, just the reality of the situation. With the smaller project, we still want to work with you, but we're gonna have less financial flexibility to do so. Um, so it's going to make our lives harder to add this list of compromises with the smaller project, but we still want to meet and discuss how we can, you know, uh, no, those are add some compromises that we haven't thought of yet, maybe. I know you chatted with Mr. Um, McDowell and I earlier about that as well, and then and also got, uh, well, it might have been Bart, who, uh, or Rick, I forget who told me, let's do it now. Um, if there's opportunity for further discussion, we want it to happen. That's Mr. Um, McDonald's uh, preference as well, and probably the, the discussion, if we discuss it, council's desire as well. I mean, I've heard um, density concerns. Obviously, I've heard concerns about what else might go there if the project wasn't successful. I, might, uh, I keep hearing people say the, bu the bubble might burst, and then I also heard it was deflating. I'm not sure uh, it's, either, it's one or the other, um, but the data helps, with, uh, whatever the data happens to be. Um, I don't think continuing to talk hurts anyone. Um, and I, I know Mr. Um, McDowell will make himself available, and I'll make myself available too to make, see if there's any way to, uh, um, to uh, bridge the gap. It may be impossible, uh, but in fact, it's still worth having discussions uh, with both the VNA and Arsenal Hill, as well as the Vista Guild, and I'm um, happy to make myself available for yeah, that too. Yeah, and, and absolutely, and I appreciate that suggestion, Mayor. And, and obviously, like we said, we still have work to do, and this public hearing is useful for us as developers. We're hearing a lot of the issues that are presented here tonight, and you know, we like to ask if we defer the first reading uh, until the next opportunity, um, and we can try and schedule uh, follow-up meetings with some of the Vista Neighborhood Association. Uh, we have some Vista Guild representatives here, mm -hmm. um, which we seem to be making good progress with. 
I don't think we're there yet with anyone, but um, I think we're making solid progress on collaborating with the community. So if it's okay with you all, we'd, re we'd like to request that we defer uh, the first reading until the next opportunity. Right. Excuse me? <laughs> it's a call for the question. You know, you know that doesn't work, right? Okay, well, thank you, David, anyway. Um, the, um, um, yes, we, we, we will defer. I'm not sure if that requires formal action of council or not. Um, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, please, um, please, Mr. McDonald. How for that we um, delay defer action, giving it two weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Is that when we're back? Is that when we're June, back? June 5th. June 5th. June 5th. 5th. Okay. All right. Uh, second. Um, any further discussion? Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to actually come back up, Jonathan, but what, what was it you passed out to us? You know, uh, I'm not sure you referenced it. it and just, 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 you can just say, just say it from right there. Uh -huh. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Gotcha, brother. Thank you. Thank you much. All right. I just wasn't sure what that what, what that was. Bart. Yes, sir. Um, this, this is the public hearing. I mean, I think, and I think, unless something dramatically changes, I, I, I think that your comments have left an indelible imprint. On, on council's psyche. I mean, so I mean, I think we know exactly where you are unless something changes. So, I think you're in good shape. How will we know if something changes? If something changes, you're going to be in the room. Uh, the, 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 goal, the goal is, is to get you all together again over the next three weeks and, and see if we can hammer something out that might make some sense to all parties. Okay? Not, nothing, nothing will happen here unless everyone's actually around the table talking about it. All right? All right, Bart. Um, Kendall, Mr. Summy, excuse me. Mr. Mayor, Council, I had not really planned to say much, but I think one point I'd like to make. I sit on my terrace, and I've heard too many fender benders at the corner of Lady and Huger Street, Huger Street. I have felt like I was risking my life when I tried to cross the street riding my little bicycle from time to time. I've had relatives visit and stay at the hotel that uh, is on the, just as the curve when you come around uh, off the interstate almost have an accident. I think that if we add 400 some odd more cars in that area, of students texting while driving, doing whatever, they may do, they may not. I think the accidents will increase. Now I think major designs in streets uh, and uh, may be part of the solution to this. But with the existing roads and the existing speed limits and the existing lack of lights and, and whatnot, I think that will indeed cause more of a problem and lives, I think, will be lost. I think fender benders will be the least of our problems. So I do offer my opposition this plan as is, has been stated. Thank you. Thank you. Move, move the previous question, Kirk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. That concludes your zoning public hearing this evening. All right. Uh, all right. Um, is anyone else here, uh, uh, citizen uh, input? Scott in the back? Yeah. The gentleman in the very back wanted to speak. Does anyone else sign up to speak? Did you want to speak? Did you want to speak? <clears throat> Sir, did you want to speak? No, this is on it's another right. issue. You come on up. Oh, 
touch your people? Yeah. You want to touch your people? Uh, Let them get off the elevator. <laughs> Yes, sir. How are you, man? Good to How see you. How you doing? Um, the thing I wanted to uh, bring up as far as um, I wanted to address the city council tonight is basically as far as uh, through the media, a lot, everybody is concerned about the recent, I guess, uprising crime and things of that nature. And it seems like nobody uh, wants to attack the root of the problem. Everybody wants just to basically pretty much execute when it hits the fan. And my thing is tonight, um, like I've said before, when I came a few years ago, is pretty much um, centered toward the band of box, the lack of resources um, in certain areas and stuff like that. I've seen um, a lot of people come up here tonight and address the situations about USC and uh, the Vista and things of that nature. But, um, you know, as far as where the money is going and stuff like that. But my challenge to some of you guys to basically is to stay on top of things like the uh, human resources department, which has the thing with the uh, band of box. A lot of people I've seen, I've been here in 2015 and I've seen more jobs have come to the city, but I'm also seeing people and my peer group, people I see every day, are still getting casted out the workforce for mistakes they made years ago. And like I said um, before, I always constantly say, anytime resources are limited, there's always going to be conflict, there's always going to be mayhem and things of that nature. And when a lot of times when you have people out and out that workforce, like I said, expect the unexpected. And so pretty much I'm... I'm challenging you guys if you can go in your personal districts and also lobby behind this more actively, more aggressively. And also I want to know, basically, is the fidelity bond, the federal bond being utilized to its fullest potential um, with the situation that I'm bringing up as far as unemployment? Because like I said, a certain group are still being out, outcast in the workforce center due to mistakes they've made years ago or whatever and I understand that a lot of you guys have a link to the human resource department um, down here. Um, I also understand that uh, as almost as of March is um, a little over 17,000 people in Columbia are unemployed but a lot of those people are in that margin I just kind of outlined on um, you guys people that look like me, people in my peer group, you know, um, predominantly a lot of males um, in the city. These are issues that um, I've experienced firsthand, but it's not as bad for me as it is for other people. It's not about just me, but it's about everybody. And honestly, like I said, if um, we're gonna talk about bringing down crime in our city, we're gonna have to attack the root of the problem, which is a lot of the resources are limited. Sure, no. But thank you for coming back again and for your stick to itiveness. You know, the, um, uh, as we discussed the last time, the reason why we banned the box at the City of Columbia is so that folks would have second chance opportunities um, working, not just uh, with us, but hopefully opening doors up to other opportunity. We agree 100% that you give folks an opportunity to earn a good living, it affects everything else around you. It affects um, uh, crime. Um, obviously, if someone's able to put a roof over their head and take care of their families, uh, get folks back on track. So we couldn't agree more, and we support uh, that mission inside the city and obviously with the people we, we deal with on a regular basis. So we support what you're trying to do. And uh, if you think of other ways, as I offered before, ways in which we can deal with private sector entities or other public sector entities to also go in the same direction that we've gone as a city, uh, we'd love your support. Well, basically what I'm asking is I know some of you guys have your own districts that you're assigned to that you can um, push it more actively um, in your district as far as educating the people in your district on it, why is it um, important, and also how it affects the economics around that community. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to be spending some time in the next um, couple months talking about, particularly about, specifically about construction jobs and ways in which um, uh, we can uh, kind of get more opportunities uh, for everybody here in, in, the, in the community. Um, you want to say something, Mr. Davis, and then we're going to have briefly. a motion to adjourn? Uh, yeah, I, um, I understand what you're saying. 
and I'm not going to tell you, I feel you, but I understand what you're saying. Um, and we do plan to have some, uh, some conversations about this city that you're talking about and the growth, where it's going, and who participates. Um, I would suggest that you stay in touch with us, all of us, or choose your pick. As, as we move forward and start to talk about plans for the city. Bottom line on all of that is decent livable wages. That's what I hear you talking about. And, and, and jobs that meet your skills or opportunities that you might be able to step into that will help you, you know, gain more skills and training. So the bottom line is when we talk, I, I think you ought to find a way or we ought to find a way to have some communication with you and, and, and the peers that you're talking about. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. All right. Let's stay in touch in between yeah. meetings, Have okay? You. Spend some time, all right? I didn't get your name. What's your name again, sir? Jordan. It's Jordan Cooper. Jordan Myers. My, Jordan Myers, Myers. yeah. All right. Um, moving probably a second. Any other discussion? Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Jordan. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you all.